Hey guys, um, just a quick tutorial on how to change the um, font colors and how to even change the background colors and uh, make it italicize or um, some other decoration like underline. So you can do that in Python. You don't need to import anything. So um, as reference, I'm going to post a link to this repository I found on GitHub. Um, Minison put this up there nine years ago, it looks like, and it's still working. So this should continue to work. Uh, so let's just take an example here. So let me actually just reset this code and I'll just print a normal statement. So when you normally print and you say like, hello world, okay, it'll just print in black and white. So the background is white, the foreground is black, and that's pretty much it, okay? If you, however, wanted to change that, you could do that by resetting the um, actual background. And you can actually do this two ways. One, you could just do it in a print statement. So I could just tell the computer, hey, I want you to print in a different color. So let's choose, uh, well, let's choose red. red. Red's cool. So I could use this color, but actually just take the inside of the string. So you don't want to print all. I could do it actually two ways. I'll just say I could take the whole um, variable red. I could um, print. I could say, hey, Red is this string, which is an escape character followed by a bunch of codes, okay? And I could just say print red like this. And if I do that, it'll actually print it in red. You'll notice that there actually is a blank here because this is actually going to take a space. So you actually could do this in one line. So what I'm saying is you could take this out and say print red. This, this is the code and plus the statement, and then it won't be an extra space. So it'll just be like, hello world, okay? So that's one way you could do it. You also could just use this code directly. So for example, I, I could, um, let me copy this and I'll make the, the next word, I'll make the next word a different color. So if you change this, the last digit before the M, you'll notice if you reference it. So um, what color do you want, blue? Blue is 34M. So everything is the same except for the last digit. So if I change that to um, uh, 4, was it 4, I think? <laughs> It'll be, um, why didn't it, oh, I accidentally cut this. Okay, so there we go. Now we have red and then blue. And you could do that for each character or, or anything. But So this right here is kind of... Um, a way of using the escape character. And by the way, if you don't know what the escape character is, let me kind of explain that really fast. I probably should have led with this, but let's just take my name, for example. So if I wanted to print my name just normally, but I want it to be on separate lines, an easy way you can do that without having to write a new print statement is forward slash n. This is actually an escape character. It's not, so this right here is the escape character. And what it says is, I don't want you to actually print n, I, the, the next character is it's actually a special character alert to the computer. This is actually, it has a new meaning. And this new meaning for N is new line. So what this actually does is it puts the first part of the string on one line, and then it creates a new line and, print, print, and then does the rest of the string. Okay, whoops. <laughs> Be careful when you're dragging stuff. So if you'll notice that it will then say my first name, my last name, etc. Okay, so that... This right here, this forward slash, has been used a lot. This part right here is specific to Python. Okay, so actually slash n works in Java and other languages. So you might have seen that before. This right here is something that's probably foreign to everyone. But this you can use kind of the same way. Okay, so you can use it throughout your statement. So let's actually look at um, another example. Let's just say print. Um, this is so cool. <laughs> okay, so you'll notice a couple of things. Once I've set the color of the foreground, that's the one you see the most, to blue, it continues to stay that way until I reset it. So if I wanted to change that color, I would have to change it back. So I could like copy that and put that here and say I don't want it to be that color, I want it to be this color, whatever color that is. Blue didn't seem to do anything. Uh, maybe it's a different color. It probably would help if I wasn't colorblind, which 
<laughs> actually am. Okay, there's a different color for sure, okay? So you'll notice that um, you have to keep changing the color. And by the way, if you want it to go back to black, well, you could either set it back to black manually by putting in 3-0. So I could do like, put, let's go to 3-0 here. So we'll go back to black. If you can, if you want to do it that way. Or there's actually a reset button, which is just putting in a 0, okay? That's actually the one thing that you probably would remember, okay? Now, notice, however, this is actually reset all. So it actually resets everything. So let's look at some of the other stuff. So we just talked about colors. Let's look at the background colors. So you, if you wanted to change the background, for example, you could do it with all the four. So these are all 41 through or 40 through 49. Okay. And 49 is a reset of the background. Oh, that's what happened. 39 was a black. It was just reset. Anyways, um, if I do like, um, let's say I wanted to have a scion background, I would type. The same part, but I would do 4, 6, M. So let's try that over here. We'll say, right here, we'll say 4, 6. Okay. And now it makes the background color. So it's still there. It's just printing in the same color. So let me actually do a different background color. So now the background color is purple, but the foreground color is cyan, and it looks kind of like that which is kind of cool. You'll notice that if I then change the color of the font to something else, let's do like yellow. So now it doesn't actually reset. So you can overwrite the foreground color without affecting the background. So they're separate entities. So there's a foreground, a background, and there's also a decoration. The decoration are in the just standards. Okay, so like one, one through nine, I think, are the different decorations. So if I do like, for example, if I just take away the, the last digit, I just make this a 10 digits, it'll be like italicized. So it's it's italicized. Okay, and you can actually do these together. So I could actually um, do like, um, let's do two. I don't know what two does. So I can do both at the same time. It didn't seem to do anything. Let's see what one does makes it bold. So one makes it bold, and then I can have bold and italics. So you can have like multiple decorations. You can even have like underlined as well. I could like insert it in the middle of this and just make it um, underlined. I think it's four. Yeah. So you can like add decorations just like you would in Microsoft Word. So there's a little bit to keep track of, like foreground, it overrides. Decorations just pile up which is why it's really nice to be able to reset it. You don't want to undo all that stuff because it's really the only way. <laughs> so anyways, let me know if uh, you like that. Thumbs up. I would be appreciated. Talk to you guys later.